Americans also watching the Middle East where U.S. drones are now flying over Baghdad as the crisis in Iraq escalates. This, as we now learn, apparently the insurgents don't likely have nearly as much money as originally thought. Michelle Cruza Carrera, what's the latest there? Hey there, Bill. You remember last week there were these reports the ISIS insurgents stole $400 million from a bank in Iraq and that they may be worth as much as $1.5 billion from their oil sales in the seized wells in Syria? NBC News reports it's not true. Citing sources in the U.S. intelligence service, it's believed ISIS stole millions of dollars, not hundreds of millions of dollars. And analysts also don't think ISIS has enough money to control the vast swath of Iraq and Syria that they've taken over. It's an area with a population of 8 million people in an area the size of Wyoming. If you focus in on just the part of Iraq that they control, that area is used to receiving $12 billion out of Iraq's annual $120 billion budget, roughly $1 billion a month from Baghdad, which covers food subsidies, government salaries, hospitals, among other things. Those payments have now stopped. Former Ambassador Charles Reese, who is now at the Rand Corporation, says ISIS doesn't get enough revenue from their other operations to make up for that. While ISIS is uh, quite entrepreneurial, they are uh, doing kidnappings and they are robbing banks and they are uh, 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 charging taxes on trucks crossing their territory. But uh, 500 million, 500 to a billion dollars a month is uh, quite a large um, uh, overhead cost of the maintaining the population. And as we mentioned, ISIS does control some oil in Syria, but the revenue from those wells not nearly enough to support the Sunni territories in Iraq. You can read more on CNBC.com. Guys, back to you. And Michelle, just before we let you go, wouldn't this be a worrisome development potentially if it leads to more kidnappings, the typical sure. way that ISIS has been raising money here? Sure. Or if, if the Sunni population isn't getting the payments that they're used to getting, it could lead to a crisis of, once again, people leaving that area and going to other parts of Iraq yeah. that we've already seen. The U.N.'s documented huge displacement already. All right, Michelle Cruz and Cabrera on this Friday. Thank you for now. Crude oil was down today despite the latest turmoil, but it's been on the rise since ISIS embarked on its mission to destabilize Iraq and unleaded gas following a similar path ahead of the July 4th travel season. Where do we go from here? Joining us in an exclusive interview, we welcome back Chris Faulkner, the CEO of Breitling Oil. Chris, welcome back. Thanks, Bill. We get mixed reports on exactly the impact all of this has had on the supply out of Iraq. We've heard from people who say it's had no impact and that oil Oil has no business going as high as it is right now. You beg to differ on that, though. Why? Well, look, I think that we have about $10 to $12 built in right now as a premium uh, because of the ISIS situation. Folks thinking that ISIS could make their way down south to Basra, where about 2.5 million barrels of oil are exported out of Iraq every single day. I think now the market is responding, thinking that uh, that may not be the case. And I think the $10 to $12 premium was full-fledged civil war in Iraq. So I think we might see oil retreating just a bit as folks think now ISIS might be contained in the areas where they're in currently. What about the longer term damage this has potentially done to Iraq's supply of oil, which was supposed to be the bulk of the OPEC supply coming on the market over the next five to ten years? Well, look, I was in Iraq in December, right? And it was, it was unstable then. I think now things have gotten worse. Um, this is going to be a big year for Iraq. They're going to do four million barrels a day worth of oil. They're two and a half. They're going to nine is where they're targeting, which nine. is like nine million barrels a day. is a huge amount of oil. The problem we have right now is that Iraq's doing two and a half. If we lose that production, the elastic production in Saudi can't even make up for that. So we could see oil prices surging if they were to get toward the Basra region. That's yet to be seen. 30,000 troops in Iraq protect that region. But, but how again, stable are those even, troops? Even if for right now that worst case scenario is taken uh, out, which obviously we'll only find out if, as this carries on if that's the right assumption or sure. not. But for the longer term, do you think this has dealt a serious blow to Iraq's ability to meet that increased production? Production target that has been priced into the market. In other words, could, could prices be structurally higher because of that, even if they come back off in the near Look, I think I think Iraq's been damaged. I think it's in, it's not stable. I think you've got major instability issues. This draws that picture, I think, to a, to a very clear that Iraq has major issues. Can they get to nine million barrels? Maybe, but not in the situation they're in, and not with the infrastructure challenges they've got ahead. I think Iraq is at two and a half, three, three and a half million barrels. Lucky to get to four. Unless something else changes. Because look, we left Iraq in 2001. It was of 2011. It wasn't stable then, and I think things have gotten worse now, and, and I don't think things are going to just poof tomorrow, go back to the way they were. I think we're going to continue down a road that's not, not in a positive manner at all. So. And for that reason, we've talked on this program for the last few weeks about the impact all of this could have on U.S. energy policy. Obviously, you're a big fan of wanting to increase production in this
this country yes. to release the Keystone Pipeline and so yep. forth. But do you suspect, <laughs> trying to be as objective as you can, that this could have that kind of an impact on, uh, on the administration? Look, I, I think it's obvious the United States needs to be energy independent. We need to shield ourselves from a lot of this stuff going on in the Middle East and the volatility. The Keystone's a no-brainer. It's been a no-brainer for almost six years. I don't know why we still haven't uh, been able to deal with that. A positive thing, the condensate move from the administration now allowing the definition of condensate to be considered processed to export condensate in limited amounts. Can That's you a step to what, you know, the, we've had people from the yeah. administration on in the last couple of days who insist there was no change in policy. Right. Look, the, the, the policy was altered from the word process, making that condensate now is considered processed because it goes to a stabilizer at the wellhead, which purifies it. So they were able to use that word process, make it like a distillate fuel. So from your, from the industry's point of view, this was a, so it you is saw what happened with Valero. It is a change. It got killed on this news. Some of the, that's not. All the refineries so will. Yeah. There's a rational reason for that. In other sure, words. because they want cheap feedstock. And now this, oh, this is one, I think, small step toward a full-fledged crude export ban that's being what lifted. I was you, think this, you think this leads to something bigger then? I think it starts a conversation, which will not happen overnight, but I kept saying it forever, we should be exporting condensate today, and that's starting to happen now, but an administration will not go from A to Z, which is exporting crude oil overnight, but I think it starts a conversation, and I think we saw in September, we saw oil glutton up uh, in the coast, and we had a discount oil 12 bucks off Brent. Yeah. I think it woke people up that, look, if you want this party to continue, no, we need to get serious exactly about it, this. Though, and I know we have to go. If we tomorrow allowed the U.S. to export as much crude as it liked, wouldn't the price for our our crude go up immediately? Look, I don't think so. I think crude is a benchmark worldwide demand given commodity. You can't base it on gasoline prices in the U.S. It's gasoline worldwide. It's oil worldwide. Oil is coming online. It, look, oil would be a lot cheaper than it is today if it wasn't because of all the volatility in the Middle East. Our oil prices, oil production is surging. So if we were at 8.6 million in Iraq and all this Libya and Nigeria stuff wasn't going on, oil would have already came back down. So I don't, I don't think it's going to impact it in a major way at all. Chris, thank you for your perspective. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it.